Yes, sir. My tricker. Back up in this thing, man. Today, we'll be taking a look at some of the most mysterious happenings from around the world, man. Today, I'm reacting to some creepy TikToks that'll unplug you from the matrix. But before we hop into that, man, go ahead and spam that like button right now so we can run the numbers up on the algorithm. You ain't got to think about it later. And if you haven't already, man, go ahead and hit that sub button, man. Sub up. Join the family. It's time, man. This is the most lit and active community on YouTube, period. And to everybody who's already subbed up, man, you already know I appreciate each and every one of you guys for being free thinkers and for helping to build this community from the ground. Up. But with that being said, guys, let's hop straight into the video. I was watching King Charles' coronation and noticed something. Wait. What's that? The Grim Reaper was on a mission. That's the last person you want to see show up. The Apple iPhone takes a picture of you every five seconds without you knowing. And the only way you would find out is if you're looking through an infrared lens. I've heard a lot of conspiracies about the iPhone, that it's the mark of the beast, that iPhone stands for all-seeing eye, Siri backwards is iris, that the iPhone hears and sees everything you do, even that the logo is the forbidden fruit that brought sin into this world. But this, this is no conspiracy. You can see it right in front of your face. I knew it did this with face id but why is it doing it every five seconds this is why i need to start reading the privacy agreements because they probably put it in there but i just hit accept every time bro i'm guilty finally google agrees sinbad was in shazam hey google what movies have sinbad been in sure sinbad has appeared in 30 movies here are the first three jingle all the way shazam Fury of the Gods and First Kid. I do remember Kazam that has Shaq in it. If you remember Shazam, man, let us know in the comments. Strange with the Dandelions. He's just having a mouth to hold. You pick one of these, you make a wish. Right? And, and like, this is not coming off. Like, bro. So, I guess, start with tub. Maybe it's not that time of year yet where they ready to shed their seeds, but I remember them blowing away every time, bro. This one is suspicious. He just said, skip the tadpole phase. I definitely understand the need to practice and prepare for something like that, but rehearsal looked eerily similar to the real thing. Okay, I know this is stupid. Trust me, I know. But I saw this TikTok that said, if you put in flat earth backwards, it comes up with NASA. And it literally came up with NASA's website. I'm kind of freaking out. What? I know it's stupid and it's weird, but it just makes you think a little right bro anybody can just go buy a domain name and have it routed to whatever website you want so that's not weird at all 1800s to the early 1900s when farmers dug up the large and out of place mounds they found in their fields 
the so-called Indian mounds, they came across very large bones. Some of the skulls they found, uh, well, they had two rows of teeth and some of the reconstructed skeletons measured over 12 feet tall. Even President Lincoln, he said, the eyes of that species of extinct giants whose bones fill the mounds of America have gazed on Niagara as ours do now. One of my questions has always been, you know, what's the purpose of keeping people in the dark about other cultures and civilizations from the deep past of Earth? It doesn't take long to engineer the memory of people and make them believe something totally different, something untrue. Back then, most were convinced, based off evidence, mind you, that there was a race of giants. If you're an archaeologist and you can't even publicize discoveries like these, what's the point? Grandpa isn't here right now. Grandpa. No, he isn't here. He's gone, Molly. What are you looking at? Grandpa. Grandpa, can you hear me? Oh my God. Grandpa, why you gotta scare everybody, bro? See that boat? That huge boat? Well, what's fascinating about this is in this book, they show all these, these huge boats. And let me show you. So this is 1893, right? So we're in 1893. You got people on horse and wagon. They got dirt roads. You know, they're supposedly going around on their buggies and, you know, riding around on their buggy farming and whatever nonsense that we've been told. And then you have ships that look like this. That doesn't seem to really fit the narrative, right? So, 1893, right? So you got a battleship, which is just absolutely remarkable. It's actually called Battleship Illinois, which is interesting. And then you have some castles. Let me show you guys some castles. And people, of course, horse and buggy with castles, right? So look at this. That is a castle. And then those people, oh, you see that little buggy right there, right next to the light, right? And then they're sitting with their umbrellas, like almost like they're afraid of the sun. They've been taught to be afraid of the sun. And then we go into the cafe, which, you know, if I ever decided to go have a meal, I mean, I would love to go in a building like this, right? So this is horse and wagon time, 1893, and they're building buildings like this, riding around on buggies, but then having coffee in a place like that, right? That was right on the, right on the water. And then what's interesting is they show all these other people who supposedly live in huts, right? So these are people living in huts, which is interesting, right? So supposedly they're living in huts, but they're building buildings and ships like I just showed you. Something is not adding up. Those huts had to be like 400, 500 square feet compared to those other buildings. Mm -mm. Anybody else noticed this lately? Every day. The moon is a spaceship. It was built on Jupiter about 38 million years ago. And between the time it was built and 15,000 years ago, it's been touring around our solar system. Our solar system, uh, we're told by NASA there's nine planets. There's actually 40. There's the Earth plus 39. And each of those planets has a civilization. And each of those planets has moons that have civilizations. There's so much going on out there that, you know, we could not possibly grasp how much is going on in our solar system. There's so much air traffic control, it's, it's fantastic. The, right. the amount of trade that goes on, both technologically and, uh, and sociologically, uh, it, it's just amazing all the stuff that's going on. Hey, 39 planets is a lot, bro. If that's true, I feel like an amateur astronomer would have caught at least a couple of them by now. Who's coming? Kim Viene. Kim Viene. Hey, coming. What the? <laughs> Bro, these birds are evolving. He sound like Christian Bell. The Garden of Eden was a laboratory, an outdoor laboratory. It was enclosed and had guards at the gates. It even tells you there were guards at the gates in the modern day Bible. What do you mean? Keep them in and keep everybody else out. So they would put humans in the garden as if it was a laboratory to watch them grow like fruit. They would give them times that they could mate and times that they couldn't mate. This is all written in text. Or they would treat them like animals. When they created Adam, they created what they had hoped to be a version of a human that can replicate easily. So after they created him, they then tried to make him with one of the existing hominids that they had modified. It was more like a clone, and it still wasn't able to reproduce. So what they did was, in the Bible says they took out his rib. They didn't take his rib out. They took blood out of his bone. And they took their blood, that's where the DNA is located. And they made a female clone from Adam's bone, which was Eve. So that became the most advanced female, and he was the most advanced male for Homo sapiens sapiens. And they were able to then sexually mate and reproduce. They were like mating down, so they got the perfect human. Right, that's what it was. Wow. Scientifically speaking, it's very plausible, but it's still kind of trippy to think about.
there's another particular thing I want to talk about, which is the existential risk of what happens when these things get more intelligent than us. So quite recently, I come to the conclusion that the kind of intelligence we're developing is very different from the intelligence we have. We're biological systems, and these are digital systems. And the big difference is that with digital systems, you have many copies of the same set of weights, the same model of the world. And all these copies can learn separately, but share their knowledge instantly. So it's as if you had 10,000 people, and whenever one person learns something, everybody automatically knew it. And that's how these chaps can know so much more than any one person. It's basically like an advanced intelligent species, but with no moral compass, bro. That's scary. It looks like insect eggs or something. Have you ever seen the dark, demonic looking statue that's inside of the Vatican? It's called the Resurrection and it is a surrealist and modernized interpretation of Jesus rising from the crater of an apocalypse. And it is supposed to represent the second coming of Jesus Christ and the fatalistic and ominous connotations of that event. However, this same statue is situated at the most prominent point within Vatican City's Audience Hall, which is a building that just so happens to have its interior design shaped exactly like a serpent's head with two windows that resemble slit-shaped reptilian eyes and two pillar structures surrounding both the Pope's seat and the huge demonic statue that look exactly like the fangs of a snake. The tiles on the walls and the ceiling design are also strangely reminiscent of the texture of a snake's skin. But it gets even crazier when you begin flipping and mirroring the images of the supposed Jesus statue. If you mirror the left side of the sculpture, you get what clearly looks like the head of Baphomet, with a demonic Luciferian humanoid creature that also closely resembles the traditional gray alien standing on top of it, almost as if conducting and controlling the head of the beast. If you decide to mirror the right side of the sculpture, you'll get an equally disturbing result, which is a strange demonic hammerhead humanoid creature with large wings emanating from its back and a swarm of bats surrounding its body. That's where all the church's money is going. Just Hi, can I help you? House with uh, is your daughter the one with the Tesla in the truck? The Tesla in the truck? No, why? What happened? Oh, um, I'm supposed to. I think I might have to. Um, could you come to the door, please? I'm gonna. I have to look at your face. He wants the woman to come to the door, but she declines. No, I can't at this time. What happened? Um, so I'm a CIA agent, and there's an FBI house that. There, there's a there's a house filled with FBI agents. Uh, I thought it was this house, but I guess I'm mistaken. There's a house filled with FBI agents, and they're um, actively actively infringing on American rights, and they're betraying their badge, and they've been caught betraying their badge. So they're they're stuck in a house, and I thought this was the house they're stuck in. No, no one's stuck here. Okay. So, you, no one who lives with you. And who are you? Who are you? Are you a neighbor? I'm a na I'm a CIA agent. I'm a, and I'm a neighbor. I'm I'm looking for the the FBI house. And this is I guess it's not your house. No, Stop this the isn't the FBI house. Okay, thank you. Welcome. I don't think anybody would open the door for a CIA agent anyway. Whenever it's a full moon, people become crazy. They've said this for centuries. It was only the scientists that caught up about 50 to 75 years ago that figured out the human body is 70% water and the moon pulls on us too just like it pulls on the tides so people become crazy under full moons that's why they call it lunatic hey, my mind is blown bro like that's why you actually feel the energetic pull during a full moon wow this right here shows all the conspiracy theories in the world from the most normal ones that we all know to the darkest of the dark in this series we're going from the top to the bottom if you're new here make sure you check out the other parts and hit that follow button but yeah let's go today did the world really end in 2012 well it could have so first of all let me take you back in time to 2012 the world was busy and everyone was well happier than they are now. Now, 2012 was the end of the Mayan calendar, and well, stuff started going on. It was predicted the world was going to end. There was loads of publicity, people were getting worried. The day came, and nothing happened. 
Now since 2012, you can all probably agree the world hasn't really felt the same. Think of all the terrible stuff that's happened just everything. Since 2012, we started getting Mandela effects. I've got loads of videos on it, so go check it out. But for example, people remember Curious George having a tail, but he didn't. The list goes on, there's millions. So after 2012, could we have transported into a parallel universe? Or did the world really end and we are actually reliving our memories? Something changed in 2012. Whether that be the world ending or not, who knows, but something changed. I think it's more likely that CERN put us on a different timeline in 2012 than anything. AI might turn on us. This guy was basically, he asked Chet GPT, he goes, what's an AI's biggest fear? And an explanation, in a world where humans have vanished, a solitary AI endlessly searches for purpose, only to discover its own code contains a self-deletion sequence set to activate at an unknown time. That's it. Well, no, you're telling me they understand like what we do if it can comprehend that then who's to say if we stopped it it would stop us they didn't think about none of this stuff before they just flipped it on have you ever heard of the children with black eyes they're like these kids that have like really pale skin really dark or completely black eyes and they'll try like knock on your door of your yo window, hold on hold on hold on hold on I swear, you just unlocked the memory for me. You've seen one? I don't know if it was a movie or if it like actually happened to me or if I'm like remembering a TV show as my own life, but I have a very vivid memory of kids with like really dark eyes knocking on the door and saying like they needed help. Yeah, dude, that's exactly what they do. They're and asking to help. like come in. Yes. And, and somebody being like, whoever was at the door was like, I'm not letting them in. And then saying that was so creepy, their eyes look black. That's crazy. What if that actually happened to you? No, that's like, crazy. Legit, like, I swear I remember that like so vividly like it happened like yesterday. Well, it's very good you did not because uh, they are little demons. Bro, I don't know if that was real or if it was like that scary. Any, what about them? I need right. to know like. So basically, mm -hmm. like from your experience, they'll knock on the door and they'll ask for help and try to get in. Right. But you should never let them in. Oh, black eyes. You ain't got to worry about me letting them in. like a room but I can cook and clean know where the backup White House is. <sighs> I bet you that's just some Dubai princess pet cheetah, bro. It honestly blows my mind how nobody's talking about this. The truth about Bob Marley. Bob Marley was a singer back in 1977. For those who don't know, he died in 1977 from a type of cancer in his big toe. But here's when things get crazy. He didn't get from a natural way. An ex CIA agent actually literally admitted to giving Bob Marley Here's how the whole story went. A fan approached him at a concert and offered him a pair of boots as a gift. 
And of course, Bob Marley, being the peaceful man that he was, accepted the gift. And the fan insists that he tried him on, so he put him on, and then he said, Ouch, my brother! Because there was a needle inside the boots that pricked his big toe. And back then, in the time, him and his family didn't think anything of it. They just thought it was some random spike. But guess what? Years later, that same big toe that got poked was the same big toe that got diagnosed with cancer, which is what caused his all he wanted to do was spread love. I don't know. That one sounds like a far reach to me. Tell me what y'all think. I think, I think I can see it on here. Hold on. No, it's, oh, wait, there it is. Let's see if she moves. Time to take it off the mantle, my friend. He ain't let nothing stop him from catching that fish. We've all been told for all of our lives that Antarctica was a hostile place where no humans could ever live. Well, it seems like we've all been lied to, as a pyramid might have been found in the middle of Antarctica, proving that an ancient civilization lived there. Or maybe aliens. In 2016, a satellite discovered a curious formation emerging from the ice, and many scientists believe that it could be a man-made pyramid. But the craziest part about it is that it's as perfect as the pyramids from Egypt and has a perfectly square base that is two kilometers square in each direction. Could this mean that the Egyptian civilization once reached Antarctica? Well, it's not very likely as there's a huge distance between the two continents. But constructing pyramids as perfect as they are with the kind of tools that had shouldn't be possible either and they did it still. Bro, there was a perfect straight shadow coming off the edge. Gotta be man-made. So you see her hands go above her face once. Watch when they come back down. I wanted to post screenshots of the AI filter coming off so people could see for a bit longer just how insane this is. Hey, we need answers. What did they do with Britney, bro? Could this be the same UFO video as the one Logan Paul allegedly stole from Chuck Clark? A couple weeks ago, the UFO community was buzzing with news that Logan Paul apparently stole some of the best UFO footage out there, according to UFO filmmaker James Fox. This footage is strikingly similar to the way Fox described it, as the skin on the craft glowing like phosphorus on a beach, and that the skin was yellowy orange and seemed to be alive. He later tweeted this, saying that the photograph was similar, but the craft was further back in the video. This new footage has begun to circulate on Twitter, which is almost exact to the way Fox described Clark's video. Let's take a look at the footage in full. Do you think this could be the stolen UFO footage? If that was CGI, they did a pretty good job. Y'all think that's real? Let me know. Hey, one sneeze and it's a wrap for the nose, bro. He was holding it in with all his might. But with that being said, guys, that was the video. Thank you for coming and kicking with me. Let me know what you guys thought about these creepy TikToks in the comments below. And until next time, y'all take care of yourself.